Later in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys how you can win a brand new 2024 Volvo XC40 recharge on January 31st, so stay tuned for that. Photos of the brand new Porsche Macan EV have just been leaked online about 12 hours ahead of Porsche's own live streaming premiere event, which is set to tomorrow. Yeah, this is insane. The day before the premiere, we have leaked photos and quite a few of them. So in this video, which is the second video of today, I've actually uploaded a video already. This is just completely spontaneous. I was sitting on my couch just planning for filming this video tomorrow during the live stream event. And I got a notification on my phone because I'm part of the Taycan owners group because I own a Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. And I'm so excited about this car because this is one of the few cars I may want to replace my Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo with. So we're going to talk about my perspective from a Porsche owner already, an electric Porsche owner, and also what I think about this car. So this is going to be a little bit of run and gun because I'm not prepared. I just want to get this video out as quickly as possible. So this is a compact electric SUV, which is built on the PPE platform, which is a shared platform within Volkswagen Group, and is also going to underpin the upcoming Audi Q6 e-tron, which is going to be a little bit bigger because this is more, you know, Q5 sized, so a class smaller, but again, we don't have all the specs here. So what we do have is that this is a compact electric SUV, which is going to, well, replace the current Macan, but not really because they're gonna sell both Macans side by side for a while because the old Macan is only internal combustion. I think it's not even available as a hybrid, right? Only uh, with petrol engines. In the past, we had diesels, but that car is probably gonna get a facelift like next year, like the Cayenne just got. And then we're gonna have this new Macan EV sold alongside the other Macan. So this has an 800 volt architecture, which the Q6 e-tron also has, if I'm not mistaken, and which also the Porsche Taycan has. So we're gonna expect charging speeds of 270 kilowatts or faster. And then the top trim version is going to be called a turbo or maybe a turbo S, but at least there's gonna be a turbo, turbo version with 600 horsepower. And for EPA numbers, we're guessing around 300 miles. And for WLTP, we're guessing around 600 kilometers. And I know 300 miles and 600 kilometers aren't the same numbers. 300 miles is about 480 kilometers and 600 kilometers is about, what's that like? 380, 390 miles. So a little bit of discrepancy there, but that's because the test cycles in Europe and the US are different. So that's what we know. I think the battery pack is going to be 100 kilowatt hours um, gross. So guessing around 93 to 96 kilowatt hours usable capacity, which is a heck of a lot bigger than what we have in the current Porsche Taycan. That car can be had with two battery packs. I think the small one is like 79 point something kilowatt hours uh, usable. And the big one is 83 or 84 kilowatt hours usable or 93 something kilowatt hours grow. So it's going to be a much bigger battery. And some EV YouTubers out there have already been able to do range tests with, you know, the prototypes, the camouflage test vehicles, and they have gotten impressive, impressive range. So that's a little bit about the specs and also price wise, it's going to be cheaper than the Taycan. So this is going to slot below than the Taycan. So if you're thinking like, oh, the Taycan is way too expensive for me, but I want a Porsche, this car may be what you are looking for. So that's a little bit about the stats, a little bit about the specs. Now let's jump into the actual photo. So the car we have um, pictured here, if I believe correct, if I you know, guess correctly, this is a turbo, which it says on the rear deck lid. And this color is called crayon. I'm guessing this is a, a typical Porsche color. Um, I've specced a lot of Porsches in my days. Taycons, Taycan Cross Turismos, Sport Turismos, and 911. So I'm pretty familiar with the different colors and the different specs. And this looks to be the crayon paint color, which is a really, really cool color. And when I think back to it, I wonder why I didn't order my car in crayon. My car is white, but I've had it wrapped quite a few times and now it's yellow. 
Um, the front end, it has a little bit of a sharper, more futuristic headlight design than what we have in the current Taycan, but I'm guessing the facelifted Taycan, which is going to be revealed a little bit later this year, is going to have the same headlights as this. So I was just, you know, parking my car today after I went to the store, and you know, the DRLs are a little bit thick. And what I've seen from the spy photos of this and the Taycan is that they're a lot thinner. And that is confirmed with these um, photos here that the headlights, the DRLs, the four, you know, distinctive Porsche DRLs are a lot thinner. Is that because the technology has improved or is it because they've actually moved the headlights, the low beam and the high beams down low in the bumper? If we look low, below that, we can see that there's a piece of glass there. That's where the headlights and the high beams sit. You also seem to have like radar guided cruise control down below, uh, right below the um, the number plate there. And this has a five spoke design that is a little bit rem reminiscent of the biggest wheels we got on the Taycan when that came out. Um, looking at the rear end, it has, you know, that diffuser, uh, which is in the same style as in a Taycan Cross Turismo with more thinner slats, I think on the the, the normal Taycan, the slats are a little bit bigger. And you also have, you know, some fake vents, uh, it looks like, um, below the, the tail lights there, but it's just a classic Porsche design with that, you know, Porsche rear light bar. I really do like it. This is a cool photo here. You can see actually the, the lights in action. As I said, you have the DRLs up top and then you have the, the, the high beams and the low beams down low. Maybe it's because this car is higher than in a normal Taycan, they moved it down, right? Because this is an SUV. And you can also see more of that uh, that radar. Uh, you also have a grill down below, which will allow a little bit of cooling. So you also have Taycan badges on the side, and then you have a little bit of black trim there on the lower parts of the door, but above the actual sill, it looks like. And also, this looks like to have traditional door handles, like the ones you grab behind the door, not the ones that pop out in my, my Taycan. Yeah, actually it does. And also has, has the charging port on the rear left side, where the Taycan has it on the front right side. Maybe there's a second charging port. Let's go back and see. Um, is that a second? Ah, oh, dual charging ports. I'm guessing, um, yeah, you have dual charging ports. So I'm guessing that uh, on the driver's side, it's only AC charging like you have in the Taycan. And on the passenger side, it's... Um, both AC and DC, and that is standard in the Taycan. And the reason the DC fast charging port is on the rear, not the front right side, that is because I asked, you know, one of the product managers at um, Porsche when I got to visit the factory a few years ago in, in Stuttgart, asked him like, why do you have the, the charging port there? And he said, it's because the Porsche 911 has the fuel filler cap in the same location. And he also told me that the production line, you know, running above us where we're standing uh, between the factory buildings is 911 meters long, the, the assembly line for the Porsche 911. I thought that was kind of funny. I recently started using an app called Horda, which helps me get a better overview of my finances. It allows me to add different bank accounts to see my spending, even if these bank accounts are from different banks. This way I can see how much I spend every month if I buy clothes or foods or my subscription services, it helps me with a total overview. One of the nice things about this app is that it helps me keep an eye on my debt alerting me before interest rates on my credit card starts to occur so I avoid extra charges. What's extra motivating is that Hoida rewards you for being financially smart. You can earn points from various activities like inviting friends, participating in quizzes, or paying down your debt. The points you earn can then be spent on the app's store and buy things like a new iPhone, a PlayStation 5, and other exciting products. Currently, they have a promotion where you can win a brand new 2024 Volvo XC40 recharge if you refer three friends. This car is being given away on January 31st. If you want to try the app for yourself to get a better overview of your finances and spending and also be in the running for winning a brand new Volvo XC40, which in of itself is 
a reason to just download and try the app because it is totally free. Use the referral code LREFA to get 500 bonus starting points. But be quick because they're giving away this car on January 31st and this time you're only eligible if you live in Norway but who knows in the future they may have prices for other residents in other countries as well. So a huge thanks to Hoyda for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so this is the interior and it's Porsche business as usual. It actually looks closer in design to the new Cayenne, if I'm not mistaken, than it does to the Taycan. And I actually think that's a good thing. You know, I think the three screen setup, actually four screen setup, if you get the, the passenger screen like here, uh, and the Taycan works pretty nicely because you have that center console screen which is dedicated to HVAC controls So it's always there everything is easily and readily available heated seats climate and, and stuff like that So I don't mind it, but I do prefer phys prefer physical buttons like this has and it has something that I wish my Taycan had crossing my fingers Maybe well, I get I'll get this car or the facelifted Taycan and that is a volume knob there in the center console like you do have in a 911. So this is pretty nice. This is lifted out of the new Cayenne, if I'm not mistaken. Looking over to the left to the driver's side seats, it looks like we have the traditional array of Porsche buttons and that means we do have physical buttons for the mirrors. We also have a physical cruise control stock uh, behind the steering wheel on the left side. You also have, you know, the, the, the sport chrono switch on the steering wheel there on below the right spoke. And then this has the sport chrono pack, this specific car here with the sport chrono clock on top of the dashboard. So this is just typical Porsche stuff. What I do like here is that the vents seem to be manually operated again, not like in a Taycan where you have to do it in the screen. Seems like they've realized now, or maybe it's just because it's on a different platform and these components are cheaper to make. I'm hoping they realized it that they maybe went a little bit too far with you know the tech in the Taycan and now are dialing it back. We're getting physical HVAC controls. We're getting a volume knob. We're getting physical um, you know vents for the climate. So that is very very welcome. But this looks like you know typical Porsche stuff. This car seems to have so what I, I can see from the the specs here. This probably has upgraded sport seats. That's going to be an extra option. It has the upgraded leather package. So you can see the stitch leather on the door handles and also the top sections of the the doors and the dashboard that's going to be an optional extra the passenger screen is going to be an optional extra and then that sport chrono clock is going to be an optional extra with the sport chrono switches on or the, the dial there on the steering wheel so let's hop to the next photo here oh this has a purple i don't remember the name of this color of this interior this is just the normal brown beige and this is the purple and this also has some wood trim here you can see a little bit of close-up of that those um you know, those uh, HVAC controls oh, looks really, really nice. And if this is like anything it is in other Porsches, the switch gear is, is top notch. I mean, like I just find myself like just lifting the window switches just to feel the quality on in, in my Taycan. I have that car for two years now, almost on 40,000 kilometers and the car's been flawless. I mean, barely a fault with the car. So that's the same steering wheel as we have in my Taycan, it seems. Seems like the exact same steering wheel, uh, which is very welcome. Yeah, this is going to be top notch. Here you can see this car is not equipped with the, whoa, this is strange. Okay, so there's no chrono clock on top of the dashboard. You can see there in the middle, but it does have the chrono switch. You cannot have that in other Porsches, not in the 911, not in a Taycan, and I don't think you could have it in a current Macan or Cayenne or Panamera. That is interesting. Dry mode. So is that standard or is that like just a medium option? Sometimes in Porsches you can go just one step instead of two steps. But I'm loving this interior color. I'm loving the, the wood trim here, the ambient lighting. Yeah, looks really, really nice in my opinion. This also is the, oh, what's this color called again? This is, uh, what's this color? It's frozen berry, right? Frozen berry. It looks like frozen berry. Um, really cool purple color, frozen berry. This has a similar design to my Taycan Cross Turismo winter wheels. If you see my car, this ex looks exactly the same. Pretty, pretty much the same. But I'm liking this car. It's very clean in its, its design. A lot of people may think it's boring, but it's typical Porsche. It's typical clean. It's going to age very well. Imagine that the Taycan came out like four, almost five years ago, and it still looks fresh and modern. Doesn't look old at all. 
more of that rear light bar. Oh, this has, you can see that the, the other photo we saw, this does not have the, the fake vents on the rear. So maybe that's part, maybe the turbo has a different body kit. That's something I've been missing because in other Porsches, turbo gets a little bit of a different body kit, but in the, in the Taycan, it, it, it doesn't. Yeah, this is really nice. I'm really liking the look of it. It just looks like a, a modernized uh, Macan or a, a an SUV version of a Taycan. You know, this is typical Porsche with their design evolution. So that's the photos which have been, been shown. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine photos so guys i'm pretty excited because this is a video about the leaks i don't have all the specs for you guys i don't have any pricing but please be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because you're going to be sure that i'm going to make more follow-up videos on this new macan so until then let me know what you think in the comment section down below do you like this new macan don't you yeah I'm pretty excited. I'm curious to know what you guys think. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below. And for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later. Goodbye.